Uh, I am Eric Barnes with The Daily Memphian, and thank you for joining us for this live video version of the Extra Podcast. I'm uh, very pleased to welcome Dr. Scott Morris, uh, CEO. Uh, I am Eric Barnes. And one of the great things about doing this live is that there's all kinds of little technical issues I have to deal with. Uh, but yes, Dr. Scott Morris, CEO, founder of the Church Health Center. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Eric. Glad to be with you today. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, we have certainly written about many of the things you all are doing. Um, you're, you're involved with testing. Um, I think you're out working with some of the um, people who maybe don't have regular health care, um, uh, I believe homeless populations. So just talk about some of the ways in which you all are trying to uh, tackle this uh, difficult issue of coronavirus, COVID-19. Yes, yeah, so one thing is, um just hard to believe is that six weeks ago, there's probably uh, nothing that we were doing then that we're doing the same today. Um, if it's possible to completely turn upside down your business practice in that time frame, what we have done it, and I'm unbelievably proud of our staff for that. Um, but our, our mission is still the same. You know, Church Health for 33 years has been focused on providing care for the people who work to our lives comfortable, you know, who cook our food, take care of our children, wash our clothes, wash our dishes, uh, will one day dig our graves. Um, that, that remains our niche. And you know, one of the truly disturbing things for me is that who has been affected the most and, and as moving forward will be affected the most are uh, people in that economic strata in our community. Um, so, so that is still what we do. Now, the, the how we do it, um, we, we do have a drive-through test site now at Crosstown on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, we are involved with the fire department on Fridays but when the need arises to go out for pop-up testing sites. Uh, we run a respiratory clinic um, within um, our own clinic. Uh, and then we still take care of people who have nothing to do with COVID. You know, that that's you know, the primary thing I do that this morning, you know, I, I saw anywhere from, you know, somebody who had fallen down four weeks ago and both his head and his leg were incredibly infected. Um, somebody who uh, was almost certainly having a heart attack, somebody with a mass in his stomach, you know, the, these sort of healthcare issues are, are still out there um, and don't change. And that continues to be what Church Health does. The, um, so many things to touch on. One, one, one that has been, you know, obviously talked about a lot. We've talked a lot <clears throat> at the Daily Memphian and, and on the, the on behind the headlines and the podcast here is testing. And it seemed clear that, um, you know, obviously everyone was caught off guard in terms of the availability of testing and getting testing ramped up. Um, but various numbers have been talked about by the mayor's office and the healthcare task force, and so are the COVID task force. But Generally, people say about 2,000, we need to be doing about 2,000 tests a day, but we're still stuck at somewhere around 750 to maybe 1,000 a day. What, from your point of view, how does, how does the city, the county get to that 2,000 number and what role does church health play in increasing that number of tests? So to start with, uh, when all this happened, um, this issue of testing became very clear early on. And um, trying to think about ways church health could be fully engaged. Um, uh, Lisa Householter is on our board. Uh, Dr. Jane's been a long-term friend. Uh, we're definitely close to both the city and the county mayors. But you know, one thing I felt like we could do is, is offer expertise. So I um, gave over my, my chief operating officer, my, my right hand, Jenny Bartlett Prescott, um, to try to help on the COVID task force, sort of as a loaned executive. Um, and Jenny's role at this point has become the, the person in charge of testing for the city and the county. Um, Jenny's incredibly smart, unbelievably even uh, keeled about this, uh, and has, has now um, learned what being involved in government decisions were all about. She's reassured me that um, there's no chance she will ever leave Church Health to go work for the government. <laughs> but, but said, um, you didn't realize you're being recorded, right? Yeah, I did mention that. <laughs> well, I, I, I feel fairly confident that um, she would back me up um, and, and 
confirm what I just said. So um, anyway, uh, nevertheless, it's been really rewarding to watch how everybody, uh, despite our differences, has come together to work um, uh, as best possible in, con uh, in a concerted effort. Um, so on the testing, that primarily um, comes down to UT and John McCullers at UT, who's on Jenny's uh, committee, and um, work extremely closely with the people at Christ Community. Um, so that group, I believe, is doing as good a job as we can to develop our testing sites. Um, you know, there's the issue of testing at the hospital. Uh, there's the issue of testing at Tiger Lane under the UT umbrella. There's then the um, issue of the safety net clinics, which would include Christ Community, Church Health, and several others out in the community. Um, and then there's the private doctors. Uh, we tend to forget the private doctors role in all of this. Um, and so we are standing up sites all over the city almost on a daily basis. Uh, the thing that is hard to understand at some level, which we are dealing with now, is a lack of demand. Um, you know, we, we actually have more capacity for testing right now that, than we have demand. And, um, you know, why that demand has fallen, I think we're all speculating. I, for, for me personally, I think it's all driven by fear. Um, fear of going out and being exposed or being outside or being, you know, that sort of fear? Uh, fear of finding out what if I'm positive. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, fear of the test itself. Um, you know, it's, it's an unpleasant test. I mean, what, what can you say? I mean, it, it's not something that, you know, you want to do every day. Um, and, and then because of the troubles early on, uh, for a lot of complicated reason in terms of how long it took to get the test back, that, that that is no longer the case. I think there's everybody out there could be reassured that a test will come back within 28, 24 to 48 hours um, now. Um, but the fact that you know there were you know stories out there that it took five to seven days or, or longer to get a test back. Some people go, well, I don't want to go through that. Um, but so. To me, that is the, the biggest issue right now is how we motivate uh, our population to actually get tested. It, it's not so much anymore our lack of ability to do the test. Well, one thing that um, I talked to, I, you know, Dr. Stephen Threlkel, who's the infectious disease expert, I'm sure you know, at, at, at Baptist, and I spoke to him, and I've spoken to McCullers, but most recently to, to Threlkel, and um, we did live Q&A with that. And a lot of the questions I got, it was very interesting. They, they were around um, the, the issue of, I feel like I might have some symptoms. People have said, my doctor's not sure if I should go, but I don't think I can go get tested at a site unless I have an appointment and a declaration from my doctor that I do that. Is that right. holding people back? I mean, if you, if you don't have a doctor, I mean, there are lots of people who don't and you just feel sick and you wanna go get tested is there an answer for that person? Yeah, right. So again, things changed. And this is also, I think, part of the problem is that, you know, the rules have changed day by day by day. Um, if you have any symptoms whatsoever now, you can be tested for free. You know, I think that's another issue is, is it going to be a cost? I'm going to pay for it. Yep. Every testing site out there is free. Um, yes, you do have to have an appointment, but literally you don't have to have a doctor refer you. You just call and make an appointment. So you want to get tested Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, you have any symptoms and you want to come to Crosstown. Fine. Call the Church Health Center number, which is 272-0003. And you can get tested Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at Crosstown for free. No problem. Um, so that issue of I need a doctor, you don't need a doctor. Um, you, you do still need to have symptoms. You know, this issue of testing asymptomatic people is, is a conundrum. Um, but, but we are not testing asymptomatic people now for a lot of reasons. Um, so yeah. leave it out for people with symptoms. But any symptom works. 
It's really, it is interesting because even, I, I mean, I, I follow this stuff pretty closely, but I get confused because again, the, and that's not any one person's fault or organization's fault. It's just so much information and it becomes a kind of information overload. So that's very helpful to know. And, and for, for us in the media and us in the Daily Memphian to, to, to highlight that those, I think even I thought on some level when it said you have to have an appointment and you have to have symptoms, I kind of thought that meant symptoms as understood by a doctor and an appointment as directed by a doctor. I didn't realize it was, I can make my own appointment. And I can say, hey, I feel, I got a fever. I'm coughing. I don't feel well. That's all it takes. I, I didn't. Yeah, absolutely. So Eric, I mean, you know, church health's, you know, uh, mission has to do with people working in low wage jobs, but our testing site is open to the entire community. So, I mean, here, you live at Crosstown. If you develop a fever, you have a cough, you have, any type of six symptoms, you call 272-0003 um, and you will be given an appointment and, and you will come through our drive through testing site. And how cool is this? Um, for, for people who might be at risk around food, we will also put um, an entire trunk load of food uh, in your car. That's amazing. Yeah. And with the Memphis uh, Food Bank, that, that is amazing. So anyway. All right, um, we're gonna come back to some of those things. Let me do a quick uh, uh, break here in the middle and mention that we are brought to you by FedEx, Possibilities, What We Deliver by Delivering. And let me uh, remind everyone that we hope you will subscribe to the Daily Memphian site uh, for unlimited articles. Of course, all of our coronavirus coverage is free right now, uh, but we do are doing some other stories that um, we hope you will subscribe to. Um, and please do subscribe to this podcast. Uh, we're doing it, you may be watching right now as a video on the site, but it is also it's a weekly podcast. So if you join late or you wanna um, catch up on past episodes, they're all on the Daily Memphian site. Uh, they're on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, we also have podcasts, Bill Drees does one on politics, Jennifer Biggs on food. Uh, the Behind the Headlines is on uh, all those locations as a podcast also. Um, I'm curious your thoughts on the steps, you know, there's, there's the steps towards reopening. And, and I guess we all need to accept and, and the premise is it isn't flipping a switch. It isn't going back to where we were on any date certain. But the process of beginning to move towards a little more normalcy, businesses reopening, you do a lot, for instance, with restaurants and restaurant workers and providing healthcare to to people in the, the service industry who don't have healthcare in normal times. And that industry has obviously been decimated economically, uh, if necessarily. Um, your thoughts from the church health point of view, a doctor point of view of, of those steps that need and markers and criteria that need to happen for us to begin the process of reopening. So it's uh, incredibly easy to just focus only on the economics. Now, we all care deeply about the economics. Um, you know, it's painful to see the number of people who have now lost their job. Um, I, I can assure you with, within our clinic, I mean, I don't know, virtually everybody I've, I mean, I'd say everybody I did see today no, no longer had a job, yeah. um, which is to the, to the point that we care mostly about is that who this impacts the most or the most vulnerable in our society. So when we go back to trying to approach things as normal, we cannot forget that. Um, the, the people who we all need in order to get back to our normal lives are generally people who are making minimum wage, who are on the front line. Um, and we cannot do something that is going to have a terrible health outcome for them. Um, just because we want to get back to some sense of normal. Uh, all of us need to realize we're in this together. Um, one of the things I've probably have said to you before, um, here in Memphis, nobody cares about Memphis unless you're from Memphis. You know, I'm not trusting Nashville and I know I can't trust Washington. Um, we, we all choose to live in Memphis and therefore we have to lock arms and ask the question, what is right for this entire community. Now, I spent this afternoon with um, uh, faith community leaders uh, trying to find a way where a moral voice can actually come out of our faith community leaders, Jewish, Christian, Muslim across the board. Uh, 
liberal conservative. Um, you know, I think we are we are finding a way to wrap our heads around that this can't just be about politics. It can't just be about economics. Um, at the end of the day, from my perspective, this is a moral question. This is not an economic question. How do you think, um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but, but I don't know. I mean, I think in some ways, I don't wanna be premature in thinking about the other side of this, but I think it's helpful and it's obviously on people's minds um, that healthcare might change. Uh, on the other side of this, that that this is, you know, exposed so many people who were very maybe had insurance but were underinsured, people certainly who had no insurance, um, that you know people losing their jobs and thus you know not able to afford their their copays and their premiums and their cobra payments and so on and so forth. Do you think at this early point that this will have some impact and and make major systemic changes in the way we as a country deliver healthcare? Or will we go back to normal? So six weeks ago, we at Church Health, we didn't do telehealth. Today, 80% of our patients, we are doing via telehealth. I mean, we have invested a lot of money in, in, in training and uh, in, in being able to, um, to find a way to do this. Um, you know, we closed down our dental clinic, which is one of the things we've been most proud about. But when you start thinking about dentistry, you know, look at all the potential for aerosolizing the virus at every turn. We can't be doing dentistry the way we've always done dentistry. That, that is not going to happen. Um, you know, yes, healthcare is definitely going to change. Uh, you know, the work at Church Health, we are not going out of business. Um, but there are going to be a lot of people, more than there were, who were uninsured. Um, you know, how we think about we fund healthcare in America and how we fund here in Memphis uh, the healthcare issues for the poor uh, is going to be a real challenge. Um, what, what we hope, we see this as an opportunity for us not just talk about, think about sick care, you know, that this becomes an opportunity for us to ask, what, what does it mean to live a healthy life? You know, moving forward, uh, how do we live a healthy life? Um, because we know that issues of diabetes and high blood pressure put you at greater risk of having bad outcomes with corona. So, so maybe here's an opportunity where we actually move forward and we, we deal with issues of smoking. We, we are eating healthier. Um, and then you know, what, what we're all on the verge of right now is imploding completely when it comes to our own spiritual well-being. I mean, the impact of depression on us right now may be as great as whatever toll the virus is taking. So, so yeah. we're going to have to change. Yeah, I mean, how much of you, do you all have in normal times a, a, a mental health program with un, under church health, is that a part of the, the suite of services that you offer? I, I should know that and I don't. It, it is. And just you know, 50% of people who come to a primary care doctor like me have no medical problem. Yeah. Historically, people come to doctor for reasons they used to come to priests. Um, but today, I mean, in the last week, I, mean, I can't think of a single patient I saw that there was not an issue of depression, anxiety, a big issue right now is issues of uh, relapse around substance abuse. So yes, Church Health has both counselors, psychiatrists. We are very involved in the issues of recovery. And, and what percentage of the healthcare uh, right now, the healthcare staff that you have are volunteer? Um, very few, because one of the things that we have done that I'm very proud of is that um, we have had run 62 subspecialty clinics staffed with retired doctors. Um, you know, these are people who five years ago, you would say those are the best doctors in Memphis. But you know, one of the things that is incredibly sad for us is uh, Dr. Charles Saf Safley, a dermatologist with a, a weekly volunteer with us. And Dr. Safley is sadly one of the people who has died from the virus. Um, so putting our retired subspecialist at risk is just something we can't do. Um, the other piece of this is since um, 
we are no we are currently not doing elective surgery. Um, you know, we, we have a thousand physicians who volunteer with us, but but those doctors who are willing to do elective surgery for our patients for free, a, a knee replacement or or even take out a gallbladder, that they're not working right now. So yeah, all, all of our staff for the most part are 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 paid are paid staff. Um with just a few minutes left here, one thing I've asked a number of people who've been on, I think I asked uh, Dr. Jane and um, uh, Manoj Jane, and I think I asked Dr. Felkat, and I would ask you is, um, how is the, the media coverage? Um, what, what can be done differently? What's been done right? Um, it, it's, it's, I don't claim that the Daily Memphian has done everything perfectly at all. I think we've done some really good work, and I think there's some things that, you know, it's, it's a difficult and fast-moving story, but how has the media helped or hurt or what can it do better? So, you know, a, a little knowledge is dangerous sometimes. So it has been a little frustrating for, for me. I mean, just watching the criticism that has come out um, that, that the knowledge that it's based on has maybe not been fully informed. Um, and, and then, None of us have done this before, even the experts. Um, you know, what the COVID task force here in Memphis has done has been really remarkable. I, I've been on a number of the calls just listening in. And um, I mean, it is an army of people who probably never worked together uh, trying to do what's right for our city. Um, it, it's been remarkable in some ways. I mean, again, you know, Church Health is now working with Christ Community and the other FQHCs in a way we've never done before. Um, but that took effort. It took commitment. Um, and so I, there have been some times when I thought the media was a little hard on this process. And, and the hard was really based on not understanding how, the difficulty it was to do this. Um, and expecting answers when there were no answers. We, we, they were unfolding as time went on. But, but look, I love the fact that y'all spent so much time trying to get it right. So I, I'm grateful yeah. to for that. Yeah, well, no, thank you. And I wasn't, I, no, I appreciate that. And I think that is, you know, there's, there's the inherent impatience of journalism meets, um, the, you know, and, and the desire to have an answer meets something that right now is not answerable. And I think, some of it is, um, I, I don't say this as an excuse, I say this just as a personal observation. It's been remarkable to see how unprepared we've been as a nation, as a state, and as a city. It, 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 you just, you didn't think, one did not think that, that we were quite this unprepared for it. And, and I think that's been a realization that, you know what, people don't have answers. And I think everyone's going through that, both the media and citizens and, and so on. The, the criticism though needs to go back 50 years. Yeah. There's not been a single administration, Republican or Democrat over the last 50 years who took this stuff seriously. I mean, it is not like it is, oh my God, where did this come from? I mean, we've known for, for since the 1917 pandemic that something like this could sweep through America and be devastating, but but nobody wanted to invest in uh, our preparedness, um, and and you know that's every political uh, realm there has been uh, can be faulted for that. Um, yeah, I don't fault yeah. the average everyday person. I mean, nobody would ever believe this could happen, right. uh, but it, you know it's just a matter of you know. Of, we've been unwilling to invest in the possibility of, of going through now. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that is all the time we have. Uh, Dr. Morris, Scott, thank you so much for being here. Stay safe um, and, and um, amazing work that you all are doing. I can say that unobjectively and uh, I certainly we all appreciate it very much. So thank you for being here. I'll just say one more time. If, if you have symptoms and you want to come across town uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, you call the Church Health uh, main line, which is 272-0003, and you can get tested here for free. And if you are food insecure, you, you will leave with uh, a trunk load of brushes. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. And we will be doing this, I think, a couple times a week going forward. 
um, talking to people, trying to shed light and, and spread some information about how people deal with this and, and how we all deal with it. So thank you for joining us and stay tuned for further episodes.